welcome to Kids Worship. Um, we've got several things to talk about today. Uh, we started the story of, the, of Moses the last time I was with you. And um, sorry, I just have a little painting project I'm going to do, but just keep keep listening. Um, and we talked about how Moses was called by God. Remember the burning bush, how he was called. Uh, God was in this bush that wasn't really burning up, even though it was on fire. And he called God, uh, Moses and asked him to go to Pharaoh and ask him to let the Egypt or Israelites leave Egypt. And we talked about um, how Moses was a little nervous about that, but God promised to be with him and um, all that. So now we're getting to the point where Moses has agreed to go and um, God is telling him what to do next. So we're going to find out how exactly God actually uses Moses to get the Hebrews out of Egypt. So stay tuned because um, he's going to do some really, really amazing big God things. And one thing I want you to remember, we're, gonna, we're getting ready to do some worship songs. And I want you to remember that this same God we're talking about in these stories is the same God that we worship today. And he still does amazing things. And so think about how amazing he is as you sing with all of your heart. And I'll see you in a minute.
So now Moses and his brother Aaron are going to Pharaoh and they go to see Pharaoh and they ask him if the people can leave and Pharaoh says no. And he doesn't want to leave all the lose all these slaves that he's got doing so much work. And so Moses leaves and God sends him back and says this is what I want you to say to Pharaoh is you know, there's going to be a plague, as which is like a really bad something that's going to happen in Egypt, kind of as a punishment for not letting them go. And he sends him back, and he tells him, this is what's going to happen if you don't let him go. And Pharaoh still says no, and so the thing happens. And then this happens 10 times. Each time there's a new punishment, a new plague, and each time Pharaoh says no. So if you're wondering what some of these plagues were and why they were so bad, let me just tell you real quickly what they were. Um, and they are found in Exodus starting in chapter 7 and they go all the way through chapter 12. But just as a recap, the first plague was that God turned all of the water in Egypt. Now, and remember that the Nile River, which maybe the longest river in the world or close to it, turned to blood, turned all the water into blood. So they couldn't use water. Well, then that plague went away and the next plague was the plague of frogs. Now frogs don't sound too scary, right? I mean, my cats go out and play with frogs, but he sent so many frogs that they covered the entire land. They were bothering their animals. They were eating their crops. They were inside their houses. They were everywhere. And so that was plague number two. Then plague number three was a plague of like some kind of a bug, like lice or gnats, something that bites and bothers you. And just so many of them that they were, again, like the frogs, they were everywhere and the people were miserable. I mean, can you think about when you just have one little bug like flying around your head and it drives you crazy? And just think if there's thousands of bugs and they're probably biting you. Then the fourth plague was flies. So again, like another kind of bug coming in and just swarming the land and being everywhere. Then the fifth plague was all their livestock, like their cattle and their goats and their sheep um, they all died now if you're wondering if these plagues also happened to the Israelite people most of them did not some people think some of the early ones did but most of them did not so it was really showed God's power that they live in the same land and the Israelites were not affected by these plagues but the Egyptians were all right then the sixth plague was boils, which is just a, it's like a skin condition where you have sores on your skin and it's really uncomfortable. Then the seventh plague was hail. So hail just came out of the sky, tons of it, just destroying everything that hadn't yet been destroyed by these other plagues. And then locusts, which again is like bugs, just swarming in and covering the land and being everywhere. And then the ninth plague, was darkness. Now just close your eyes for a minute. And this is not even total darkness with your eyes closed because I can even still see like some like shadows of light and stuff. But there was complete darkness. You can open your eyes again. And then the final plague, plague number 10, is what we're going to talk about today because not only is it the plague that was the one that Pharaoh finally said, yes, get out of my land, you can go. 
but it also has significant meaning for us today. So, what happened is God was going to send death to the firstborn of every family in the land of Egypt, which sounds very sad, and it is very sad. But, now, and this comes back to my little painting that I was doing. So I've got a, a wooden frame here, and this is just, I got this to kind of represent a door, like this looks kind of like a door frame. And what God told the Israelites is that I have a way for your homes and your families to be safe from this plague and no one will die. And what I want you to do is I want you to take a lamb and you're gonna take the blood from the lamb and this is really red paint right here. It's not blood, but it's red to kind of remind us of blood. And you're gonna take some leaves and branches and you're gonna paint your door frames with the blood of this lamb. And then what will happen is when the plague comes, the, the, the angel of death that's coming to execute this plan will see this blood and will pass over your house. Let me read exactly what it says in the Bible. This is Exodus 12, verse 13. It says, the blood you have smeared on your doorposts will serve as a sign. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. This plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. So some of you may have heard of a holiday called Passover. Jewish people still celebrate it today because God instructed them to continue to celebrate it every year to remember what he had done. He had passed over their home and death did not come to their home. They were saved, right? And so that's a good thing to remember. Well, why does this matter for us today? Don't forget that it was the blood of a lamb that was on this doorpost that saved them from death. And now I want to go to the New Testament, the book of John, and I want to read you this. The next day, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and he said, Look, there is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus was called the Lamb of God. Now let me read another verse to you. This is John 3.16. Some of you may already know it. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. How did God give his son? Well, he sent his son to us as a man, first a baby who grew into a man, and then as a man, Jesus willingly went to the cross and shed his own blood, just like the lamb for the Passover, the first Passover back in Egypt. And when, when we believe in the name of Jesus, when he looks at our sin, he sees the blood of Jesus covering it up and he passes over, past the death passes over and we have life in him. So think about that and think about what a sacrifice that was for Jesus that he did for us. And I pray that as you grow, if you've not already decided to follow Jesus, that you'll come to that place where you'll decide to follow Jesus. Let's pray. God, thank you for these stories. And I thank you so much that we can learn about the first Passover and the way the blood of the lamb saved your people. And today that the blood of Jesus saves us. We thank you for him for his willingness to do that, for his love for us. And I pray that you would help us to love him back well. 
In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Yes, way.